Hi, Blaine here. Install the Pocket FM app by clicking on the link in the description and unlock all seasons of our story rekindled hearted. Zoe's cheeks flushed as she heard Blaine inviting her to his bed. Blaine held her chin firmly, making her meet his heated gaze. Zoe, you prefer to spend your life with someone like Roger, who's almost as old as your father, instead of enjoying good times with me? I already told you I wanted to be your mistress, but you, you didn't agree. A mistress? Blaine looked at her in disbelief. Zoe's willingness to be only his mistress, not his partner, made him furious. Fine. I accept your offer and give you a chance to be my mistress. Get in the car. Zoe hesitated before getting in as Blaine opened the car door for her. What? Are you scared now? Zoe managed to calm her rising panic as they both got into the car. Once the car door was closed, Blaine turned to her. Take off your clothes. What? I'm your financial banker, and you're my mistress. Shouldn't you be following my instructions? Um, you want to do it here? Yeah. Is there any problem? Of course. I, I can't do it here. If you can't do it, then you are of no use. Pale-faced Zoe looked out the window, biting her lip. Before she could decide, Blaine wrapped his arm around her waist, pulled her onto his lap, and kissed her. Blaine. Shh. Blaine passionately kissed her, expressing his long-held desire. Zoe, realizing that deep down she also desired to be loved by Blaine, reciprocated. After the kiss, she shyly hid her blushing face in his chest. How do you feel? Zoe, nervous and embarrassed, remained silent, gripping his shirt tightly. Unable to restrain himself, he buried his face in her neck. But just as Zoe began to get lost in his touch, she spotted Roger outside the car, searching for her. Blaine, stop it. Roger is here. Blaine looked outside the window and noticed Roger. Zoe, your taste in men is so bad. I feel sick. He's the blind date my mom forced me to see. I met him for the first time today. Didn't you hear him say he would tell my mom about us before we left? Zoe, I don't want to hear you talk about other men anymore. Zoe's eyes widened at his commanding tone. The car windows tinted suddenly, isolating them from the outside world. Ever since he had pulled Zoe from her blind date and into his car, it became increasingly clear things would be different between them. Blaine, are you serious about doing it here? Blaine pressed his lips against hers in a kiss, showing his seriousness. As Blaine's desire grew, he slid his hands under her shirt, making her tremble under his touch. You're trembling. Do you like it or not? Um, it's fine. Fine? You little liar. You put on a face like a brave real mistress. Blaine gently nuzzled her collarbone. Suddenly, a thought of Matthew flashed in his mind, but he dismissed it and focused on Zoe. He didn't want to distress himself at a time like this. Tonight was about him and Zoe. Zoe, relax. I'll be gentle. Zoe's eyes sparkled with desire as she nodded. They were together after four years. They shared a long, passionate evening in the car, leaving Zoe completely drained. Blaine smiled tenderly, brushing her hair behind her ears. Are you okay? Yes. Zoe blushed in Blaine's embrace. Chuckling, he tenderly kissed her shoulder. While he dressed, Zoe reached for her shirt, but Blaine instead wrapped a blanket around her bare body. I can't go home wrapped in a blanket. You're not going anywhere without my permission. But I have to go home. You aren't going home. You have to come with me and get cleaned up. This is your only option. <sighs> Fine. Zoe, wanting a warm bath to soothe her soreness, agreed. After a kiss from Blaine, they headed to his place. 
Zoe, exhausted, fell asleep during the drive. When she woke up, she found herself on bed with Blaine asleep beside her. He's so handsome. Zoe smiled, gazing at his handsome face, feeling his tight embrace. Gently, she reached out to his forehead, but suddenly, he opened his eyes and tightened his arms around her, holding her close. Are you awake? Blaine smirked, shifting his gaze slowly from her face to her chest, and Zoe immediately wrapped the blanket around her. I'm hungry. Cook for me after you're done with the bath. <laughs> I'm not your maid. Aren't mistresses responsible for filling the stomach? Zoe averted her gaze, clearly uncomfortable with being referred to as a mistress. Blaine, with a mischievous smile, began caressing her cheek. Realizing his intentions, Zoe quickly got up from the bed, wrapping the blanket tightly around herself. All right. Can I borrow some clothes? Pick whatever you want from my closet. After the shower, Zoe slipped into one of Blaine's white button-down shirts and walked out to the living room. Just then, she saw Blaine stepping out of the elevator, carrying two bags of fresh groceries. Did you go to buy groceries? Blaine didn't respond, but placed the groceries on the counter while Zoe checked them. Seeing her in his shirt, he smirked, then wrapped his arms around her waist and led her back to the bedroom. Blaine, what are you doing? I want you. Don't be silly, didn't we just- Shh, stop arguing. With that, he nuzzled her neck from behind. Blaine, let go of me. Fine. But Blaine didn't move away and instead held her more tightly against his chest and began playfully nibbling on Zoe's ear. Zoe couldn't resist and found herself relaxing in his arms. I know you want me. Just say. I... don't. <laughs> Liar. Blaine gently placed Zoe on the bed, pressing his well-built body on top of her. Blushing, she buried her face in his chest as he continued to please her. Exhausted, Zoe eventually drifted into a peaceful sleep in his arms after their passionate session. Zoe, you look beautiful sleeping in my arms. Blaine tenderly caressed her hair, marveling at how he, a 30-year-old, had become as impulsive and passionate as a teenager in love, surpassing everything else. Zoe slowly opened her eyes, still dazed. What time is it? Past 10. Zoe immediately sat on the bed and Blaine's eyes instantly sparked with a renewed interest. Don't you even dare think about it again. I'm warning you. Fine. Did you see my phone anywhere? Yeah, it rang a few times. I took a look. The calls were all from your mother. You were sound asleep, so I didn't wake you up. Blaine grabbed her phone from the table and handed it to Zoe. She glanced at it and saw ten missed calls from her mother. Blaine! My mom is going to kill me! Oh, come on, you are... Shh! Zoe shushed him and dialed her mother. Unexpectedly, Gloria picked up on the first ring. Zoe, where the heck are you and what were you thinking? How could you humiliate your blind date so badly? What's going on? Mom, Mom, hold on. Will you just stop screaming and listen to me once, please? Fine, speak. That Roger guy was awful, Mom. He is not at all like the person Aunt Shelley described. He is twice my age and rude and... And then? Um, and then he, he won't let go of my hands, saying they are soft. He was saying he was in a hurry to marry me so I could give him a honeymoon baby. When Zoe said this, she suddenly felt a rock-hard arm wrap around her waist and tighten. Blaine pulled her into his embrace possessively. He couldn't bear hearing Zoe mention another man. He was staking his claim on her. Zoe looked at Blaine's face and got lost in his eyes, filled with passion and rage. Hello? Zoe? Are you there? What turn will Zoe and Blaine's new relationship take? Will Zoe be able to restrict her feelings and only be Blaine's mistress? Or will this lead to a happy relationship between Zoe and Blaine? Hi, Blaine here. Hope you're loving Recount of Heartache. Keep following us as we release new episodes of Recount of Heartache Season 1 on YouTube. If you wish to jump the queue and unlock all seasons of the audio series, you can install the Pocket FM app by clicking on the link in the description. To watch the next episode of season one, tap here. And to watch the full season one, click on the playlist.